Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Thanks for watching the video and thanks for supporting the channel all year. This might be the last video of 2021, so we're going to finish off strong, naturally, with boost. Honda B16A turbo motor. What is the best intake and why? In this video, we're going to take a look at a very cool test run on a turbocharged Honda B16A. We're going to demonstrate the effect of intake design on a turbo application. And actually, it's the same effect on a naturally aspirated combination, but we did our test on a turbo B16A. We're comparing the stock P30 factory B16A intake manifold to the Edelbrock Victor X, which is a short runner, big plenum design. What happens to boost? What happens to power? Let's take a look. Hey guys, before we get going on this video, make sure to join me live nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you've got questions about any aspect, performance, cylinder heads, camshafts, any motor, doesn't have to be an LS, doesn't have to be a small block Chevy, can be a big block, can be a Honda, I've tested it all. If you've got a question, chances are I have an answer or somebody else on the live feed also might have an answer. If you've got a question, remember, join us live, 7 p.m. live on YouTube. Let's get to our video. To get things started on our Turbo B Series modifications, we're going to compare two different intake manifolds and show you what happens with runner length, basically, on a Honda B16. <clears throat> this was a Honda B16. We had stock camshafts in this thing, stock P30 B16 camshafts. We had we ran it with a stock uh, P30 intake manifold. We had 36 pound injectors. We have our Apex uh, long tube header on it, a tri y We had the little RS Akimoto filter on the stick kind of thing, feeding the throttle body. And we ran this thing with a Honda management system. So here's what happened when we ran our motor naturally aspirated before we added the turbo, because we like to run that and make sure that everything is good with the motor before we start adding boost. Ba, ba. So this thing produced right at 180 horsepower and 127 foot-pounds of torque. You can see it's a little bit jaggedy. I'm not sure if that's the tune or I don't know, maybe if the dyno didn't like this kind of power level. Um, sometimes uh, they, they may struggle running really, really low power deals. This thing was only making 180 horsepower is not bad, but it's not making very much torque. But this is what the shape was. So this is what we started with. Here's what happened when we added our turbo kit to this thing. <clears throat> you can see it got a lot happier. It, power jumped up to 321 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 214 foot pounds of torque. And that was at a peak boost of about 11 pounds, 10.9 pounds. And we can see obviously the B series stuff responds very well to, um, to boost as they always have. And our turbo kit consist, came from Edelbrock. It was a kit that they used to sell. I don't know if it's available anymore, but it was a complete kit. It had a cast a exhaust manifold. It had a small T3 turbo, an integrated wastegate. And we had uh, an intercooler on this. I had, as, as we see from the notes here, I had to play with the, the wastegate um, opening rod. We had to bend it a little bit to get the thing to actuate properly. That's one of the problems with an internal wastegate. One is that all of that has to be lined up properly. And also the flow rate of the um, wastegate is not, can become suspect because you can't basically just bleed enough uh, exhaust out to really get good control, which is why the external wastegates are sometimes better for these kinds of applications. We were running 19 degrees of total timing, and this was run on a mixture of 191 octane. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we started doing our modifications. Now that we've illustrated the difference between what the turbo does versus versus the NA motor, we can start taking a look at the modifications we made while we had this thing turbocharged. Remember, this was basically a bone stock B16, stock cam, stock head, uh, P30 intake manifold, and we had our Edelbrock turbo kit on this thing. But I wanna run this, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna run this at two different boost levels with the P30 intake manifold, and then we're gonna swap over to the short Victor X, short runner um, B16 or B18 intake manifold offered by Edelbrock. And the reason that I'm doing two different boost levels is because the boost run with the Victor manifold didn't match um, either one of these exactly. So what I want to do is show you on both sides of this that the intake manifold really is responsible for this big change in power that we're seeing and that that ultimately affects the boost because it affects how the turbo spools up, but we'll get into all of that. So this is our turbo combination with the P30 intake manifold, 321 horsepower, 
our 214 foot pounds of torque. And here it is at a slightly different boost level. You can see basically this was just one run after the other and it had more temperature in it. And so this is what was showing. Uh, we had a manual wastegate controller on this, but we made no adjustments to it in this. And again, all we did was run it multiple times. We had more heat in the, in the system and then it made a little bit more boost. And so it made a little bit more power. Curve is the same. You'll see, and, and the peak power is very, very similar but the the way that the thing came up was much better so it had better turbo response basically but here's what happened when we added our when we replaced the p30 factory b16 intake manifold with the edelbrock victor x intake manifold short runner kind of leaning more toward a type r manifold and here's what happened when we put that in you can see that's in red so if we see it's got a big drop in power down low here and it's down below both of these in terms of power, except for a little run here around 6,500. It was a little bit better than the lower boost deal. But as we'll see, the lower boost version of this has less boost than the Victor does. And the green run has a little bit more boost than the Victor does. So I wanted to show you if we surround that one with uh, different boost levels, you'll see this thing had a dramatic effect on the spool rate of the turbo. The reason for that is the short runner Victor manifold, while it may excel in airflow at the top of the RPM range, and had we run this thing to 9,000 or 9,500, that's where this thing probably would have come into its own. But on a little B16, that P30 intake manifold is very hard to beat, especially if you're relying on it to spool the turbo up, which we're doing here. So the short runner manifold lost a bunch of low speed torque, and we see this or saw this on the NA combination as well, lost a bunch of low speed power compared to the P30 manifold. So now when we don't have that torque to spool up the turbo, we're also compounding that problem by not having as much boost. So let's check out the boost curves. I wanna quickly take a look at the boost curve so I can show you what I'm talking about and the reason that we ran multiple runs with the P30 intake manifold. So this is our this is our test at the lower boost level with the P30 intake manifold. You see we had a rising boost curve from below 5,000, 4.7 pounds up here to a peak of 10.9 pounds. And here's what the boost curve looked like from running the, the Victor X intake manifold, the short runner manifold. It actually had similar boost uh, pressure down low, it's in red, but had a little bit more boost in the middle of the curve. And then they ended up very close to the same, a peak of 11.3 with the Victor manifold. And so here is the higher boost level with the P30 intake manifold that's in green. And you can see it's above the other two. So we've kind of, as I said, surrounded the Victor with two uh, P30 intake manifolds. So we can see that they're, they're very comparable in boost levels. And um, as we saw in the power curve, even though the Victor had more boost than the low boost version of the P30 intake manifold, the P30 intake manifold still made more power especially down low. And you'll notice that the big dip that we saw in power on the Victor had nothing to do. I mean, the boost is down a little bit, but nothing compared to what it was on the low boost version with the P30 intake manifold. So if you're confused now, just know that what we're seeing there, the change in power that we're seeing is not a function of boost. And that I'm going to show you in just a minute. It's also not a function of tune. It's just a function of the change in intake design. Okay, now I wanna show you the change in air fuel ratio. Again, just to illustrate that it's basically the change in intake design that caused the change in power and not tuning or boost. And here we see the air fuel curve offered by our low boost version on the P30 intake manifold. And you'll see right away, this thing needed to be richer than this. <laughs> this is what it was tested at and this is what um, developed those power curves. So this thing would have been a lot better had it been moved up a full air fuel point. I mean, this thing really needed to be 11.7 or something like that, And but it made good power. So here's the Victor, Victor X intake manifold, different air fuel curve and you can see the thing I want to point out are two things with this. First of all, that the area where the Victor X is way down on power in the 5,000 to 5,500 RPM range, in that same range, both the, the P30 intake manifold and the Victor X, it's very rich there. It's 10.5, but they're both rich there. So the change in power 
the air fuel is the same there, but there's a big change in power. So it has nothing to do with the tune. I would agree, and I'm sure that most of you guys are going to comment, and please make sure that you do, that this thing needed to be a lot richer, I mean, a lot leaner, and it would have benefited. But the thing is, both of them would have benefited from this thing being leaner. And the next thing is we saw where the Victor is running at 12.0, which is, might be a little bit on the lean side. I'd like to be 11.7 or 11.8. But even with the um, extra power that it would get from running leaner obviously than 10.5 as we saw on the p30 intake manifold even with that gain even with that extra benefit it still didn't make the power in the middle or the top end part of the curve that the p30 intake manifold did so the lesson here is that we pick the intake manifold for the rpm range that you want to run and on a honda b16 a factory p30 intake manifold up to 8,000 rpm is really really tough to beat if you want to run Higher engine speed, short runners like the Type R or this Victor X could be a way to go. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure comparing the factory P30 intake manifold to the Edelbrock Victor X intake manifold on our turbocharged B16A? Well, here's the takeaway. Here's what I want you to know. Intake manifold should not be chosen for just flow. If we take a look at these two intake manifolds, the Victor X flows a lot more than the P30 intake manifold on. It has a bigger throttle opening, it has a bigger plenum volume, it even has runners that flow more air, but yet it doesn't make more power. Now, had we run this thing at a very high RPM, we may have saw that come into play, but in the RPM range we were running, the P30 intake manifold was designed to be optimized in that RPM range. It's just gonna make more power, and the single biggest reason it does that is because of runner length. Runner lengths are tuned to be effective in a given RPM range. That P30 intake manifold, designed by Honda, works very well up to 8,000 RPM, even under boost. I'm Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2022.